کردیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم عطی الله عطی رسول اولون امری منکم and always a reminder for myself and عبد القلاجی صدایف و مسکین و ظالم و جهل but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence Alhamdulillah that the holy month of Muharram and its openings and the 10 days of forgiveness and that Ashura is the Ashanura and the granting of light and forgiveness, Divine Grace in which all nations, all Prophets had a salvation. And in the understanding of the taif of the heart and the levels of the heart there's an eternal message and always a reminder for myself that our life is in need of the understanding of the Prophets of Allah and the states in which they represent to us. We said that for the opening of forgiveness the immensity of the heart of Prophet and Atiullah Ati Rasulul Ulul Amri Minkum and that the Ulul Am the taking from the fountainhead of the heart of Prophet gives us our eternal reality that our forgiveness not only asking in Allah's forgiveness but going back to an ancient forgiveness that the maqfirah of Sayyidina Adam salam means that in our heart and understanding for Ashura every nation's salvation is a part of our salvation because they had a event for their people at their time but Allah doesn't waste time. So there must be an eternal message and these are the immense oceans of blessings of the knowledge of awliya that how much it saves us that they come into our lives and teach us that our repentance back to the time and the reality of Sayyidina Adam salam and that Allah said that He was taught certain words and that in his tour of paradise he was taught certain words and certain horizon. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Ends and realities, and that he was to remember those, for a day would come in which he would fall from grace. And understanding from awal to akhir, from beginning to ending, is our reality and understanding of ourselves. And when Sayyidina Adam was taught, Ya Hamid Abu Haqqa Muhammad, so that all the praise and by the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Ali Abu Haqqa Ali, Ya Allahu Ya Khaliq Abu Haqqa Fatima Tazari Salaam, Ya Imam Ya Rahman Abu Haqqa Imam Al Hasan Salaam, Ya Raheem Abu Haqqa Imam Al Hussein Salaam. Means that when he saw these realities of Sayyidatina Fatima Tazara in a palace of light and we posted the narration of what the tour of that reality of what Sayyidina Adam was shown, awliyaullah come and teach us that the words in which he asked Allah before he was given the du'a that's referred to in Holy Qur'an, he had to ask by these names. 
And as soon as he asked, by the reality of these names, Ya Rabbi grant me a forgiveness. And Allah said, had you asked anything by these names I would have given them to you. So means in our path of openings we trace ourselves all the way back to our origin. And that's why the importance of understanding that du'a and in the immensity of what that opens, that all hamd and all praise and by the reality of the most praised one Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah's name most high and by the reality of Imam Ali salam because these are all the keys and the realities of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and these are the 19 letters of the huruf of Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussain. Means then you can read those articles and that reality that they are immense key in the key of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And this is the secret of the awzu is seeking refuge in those whom Allah already granted refuge. So by the reality of their reality Ya Rabbi that we're granting, we're asking for forgiveness. In these 10 days grant us this maghfirah and forgiveness. And then from the heart it's understanding from Sayyidina Adam goes to Sayyidina Nuh And that Sayyidina Nuh Alayhi salam asked Allah la ila anta subhanika ini kuntu mina dhalimeen that admitting to myself, Ya Rabbi that once you've forgiven me my path to your divine realities is the, the very essence of Ayatul Kareem. La ila anta subhanika ini kuntum mina dhalimeen that there's nothing but Allah in His supremacy and that I'm an oppressor to myself. That Allah supreme and that I have to continuously remind myself that I'm an oppressor. Ini kuntum mina dhalimeen fasajjabna najayna min al qam wa dhalika nujin al mu'mineen. And then Allah's reply to Sayyidina Nuh's du'a is that we will grant a najad to those whom are oppressing themselves. And the mu'mineen means that the essence of this is that we admit it to ourselves our rooms and we ask for the key and the reality of Prophet his holy family to be our key in our intercession. And Laila Anta Subhanika ini kuntum mina dhalimeen is glory be to Allah and that I am an oppressor to myself. Allah's glory is always supreme and that I am always an oppressor to myself. So that too and, and people ask in the videos, how did you get from here to there? We're going to make that jump right now is that always asking Prophet Wasallam's foot upon our head. Because they have to study the whole understanding but when you admit to yourself that you are an oppressor and you're asking from Allah's kingdom that your kingdom its feet upon my head, don't let me to be a renegade against your kingdom, don't let me to come against your Divine the kingdom. Because marifa and Gnosticism means that you're familiar with the kingdom. You don't just say Allah's kingdom, that's somebody who's outside the door looking very far away. So this is the kingdom of Allah yes but those whom entered into the kingdom they know that every kingdom has a king and Allah has no partner and no, sh no likeness. So means that heavenly kingdom its king is Sayyidina Muhammad and the holiness of all the prophets, all the saints and all that is our holy, all the angels everything beautific and pure and clean that I'm asking that their feet to be on my head, that never to lift my head to be an oppressor or renegade or to take the way of shayateen and, and the one whom is a renegade against the heavenly kingdom. So, La ila anta subhanika ini kuntum mina dhalimeen is a important in which our daily understanding is that I'm an oppressor to myself, it's a given. So when people 
email or ask questions that, oh I'm, I'm, oh I'm oppressing myself and this and this, it's a given and that, that should be the understanding that we should never think that we're of a saintly nature but we are of an oppressive nature. Now oppressing oneself is, is bad, oppressing others is the worst. So that we want to completely ask Allah save us from being oppressors to others because Allah punishes those whom oppress others. So ours is the oppression of the self in which Allah was that they continuously refer in Qur'an to those whom oppress themselves and that to admit, Ya Rabbi I'm one of those, I oppress myself that I should be doing the things that you have asked of me, I should be achieving and excelling in ways that you had expected of me and I have oppressed myself and I have listened to bad desires and bad wants. As soon as we enter through because this is now a pathway, there's a door of pride and there's a door of humility. So that's why when we would visit the zawiyas around the world there was always a chain at the door so that you had to bend down to come in as a sign that there's no need for arrogant people here. So they would put this chain and a, like a bar so that even through the threshold you, you had to show a respect and that should be pretty much our life. We should have our own chain that accompany, accompanies us mentally understanding that I have to walk with my head down in a, in a humble fashion against this, this world and against all that Allah's supremacy, there's nothing compared to this supremacy. So that we take a path in our life to be humble in our, in our way towards these Divinely realities. So it means that Ashura has so many eternal realities and salvation that from Sayyidina Nu and the salvation of Ashura on which the ship of safety was saved and that's the, that's the soul. When it understands that the body is an oppressor there's now hope for the soul to be saved. And that's important that when we understand that the body is an oppressor that's a direction towards the salvation of the soul. And then going to Sayyidina Ibrahim in which he was cast within a fire and Allah granted us salvation, قُلْ يَا نَهَرُ كُونِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى Ibrahim. Because in these lataif of the heart we're now moving in the direction of the sir sir and for the opening into the world of light. So that when we pass the qalb and the stations of knowledge it was the repentance of Sayyidina Adam salam was a gateway for us to receive Divinely knowledges. That we're taking a path towards humility and Divinely knowledges. When we receive towards the sirr and the secrets of Sayyidina Nuh salam for Ashura it has to do with the reality of the faith. That how can your faith grow if, if you're if you're acknowledging, if you're not acknowledging the oppression of the body. So only for the soul's only way to grow is to acknowledge the oppression of the body and that that du'a that Sayyidina Nuh was making of oppression. Then when we go to Sayyidina Ibrahim, قُلْ يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى Ibrahim. The Sayyidina Ibrahim is teaching us that we're all in this system of fire and that everything in this pharaonic system because these are the, the, the Nimrod and Nebuchadnezzar and all the pharaonic kingdoms, the satanic kingdoms that are upon this earth. Their only interest is to make you fiery in nature, anger you, give you excessively bad desires because those desires create a fire within you and this is a fire from hell not a fire from Allah's Divinely Presence. So what we see of all types of incorrectness, badness, dirtiness, why is shaitan sending that now? 
that increases the fire of Jahannam within the person. What comes through their eyes increases the fire below their body and their desires. That fire takes them to Jahannam. What awliyaullah are trying to teach us is to take the fire and put it into the heart. They take the fire of ishq and love for Allah love for Sayyidina Muhammad love for Ahlul Bayt, love for the holy companions, love for the deen above all and make that to be the fire within the heart. The satanic system also wants a fire. So through the eyes it's kindling a flame that making a fire of very evil and wicked desires. We're no longer the desires of any, of any normal state, now their desire is pursuing children and animals and anything that they want and that's why now everyone is in danger of being taken by them. Their desires have gone beyond imagination. Why? Because shaitan fed them enough fire through their eyes that now it's, it's not enough for them. They have to take their desires out on every type of wickedness and evilness. And this is then the salvation for the believer when they understand that Sayyidina Ibrahim is coming to teach that you have to control your fire. That if this fire you're asking for is now entering into the sirr sirr and into the Divinely Presence, leave the satanic fire and that only قُلْ يَحْنَارُ كُنِي بَارْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى Ibrahim. And asking continuously Allah take this fire of anger and put this fire within my heart of Divinely love because you can see the immensity of fire upon the earth and you become angered by the badness and ask Allah put the fire within my heart so that I have a yearning for Your Divine the Presence, I have a yearning to come against this evilness and wickedness. Means then it becomes a Divine grace that Allah begins to open within the heart and which we described before becomes a himma for rijal. You know some people have a zeal in which to do awful things, harmful things. Why the believer doesn't have a zeal to do good things? Seems that they work with shaitan harder than they work with Rahman. And that goes to shaitan's credit because he works his people very hard. It's not for a moment he stops, there's not a moment in which your eyes are not bombarded and that every type of desire is not thrown to you. But as soon as believers try to put out articles and good uh, advice and they say, why are you sending so much information? Why you don't say that to shaitan? Why are you sending another article? Why, why are you posting again for us to do another charity work? Well because shaitan doesn't stop. Why you, you call Facebook and ask them to stop posting such disgusting posts? Everybody's complacent with that. But towards Allah everything's supposed to slow down, have a limit. But this is the fire of zeal, this is where the believer now takes off like a rocket. If they understand that fire and this, this energy that's moving and asking, Ya Rabbi that this energy put into my heart is a zeal, as a, as a want to do more for you. That you see the difficulties of dunya and you continuously warning people. You see this? You see this? And when you do it right people start to respond to you. So we got some emails coming in, oh look they had a congressional hearing on the UFOs, right? We warn people, these shaitans are going to disclose themselves. When they feel they're strong enough to appear and not to be killed by their appearance they're going to reveal themselves. So now they're slowly now in the process of having hearings and statements and why? Who's giving authority for that? The dajjal is. The dajjal gives them approval and permission to disclose. 
But these are all of these understandings, this has to have a zeal in which to warn people, to want to do, disclose to people difficulties are coming, your key is Muhammadun Rasulullah So means that Ashanura and Ashura has an immense grace and maghfirah. The Ya Rabbi grant me in these 10 days your immense grace and that I complete this cycle of salvation. When Sayyidina Ibrahim comes and teaches us, control fire. Every time you make wudu, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُكُونِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا and then enter with intention of cooling the fire of bad character upon the self. And anytime you're angry you go and make wudu. And in Salatul Najad at the fajr time asking Allah in Salatul Najad that take away this qadab, take away the anger that burns me like firewood and put this himma and fire within my heart as a zeal for your love, as a yearning in which to make you happy and to do more and more and more inshaAllah. By the grace of Allah and that salvation on Ashura, so many things are granted on Ashura. Some people are just waiting for a specific, that's why we said, don't expect anything but know and be happy with everything. So there are levels of what will open for Ashura, that is the repentance open and the gate of knowledge is coming. Did the reality of the soul and the, str and the struggle with the body be acknowledged by Allah and now the salvation of the soul is beginning with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam who they understood the oppression of the body. And then by Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam that they're conquering the fire of their anger and many people begin to agitate and they try to, to remain as cool and peaceful as possible and they have an immense yearning within their heart and zeal for Divinely love. And they see the oppression everywhere and they try to warn people but it become difficult because people don't want to be warned about the difficulties. And by the time they get to Sayyidina Nuh salam was then the salvation from the Pharaonic kingdom. In which Allah granted now leave because the Pharaonic kingdom is all of earth. So it means what happens in your spiritual ascent that Allah gives a permission for your soul to be free. Because this is the system of Sayyidina Musa If you truly believe your body is being oppressed by the Pharaonic system, Allah grant you a transition from the world of dunya to the world of barzakh and this is the parting of the sea. So means it's like a station of mawt qabl al mawt, that's why it's at the sir sir. That's why Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa salam are at this station in this lataif of the heart in which the servant truly is leaving the physicality and truly understands the satanic system, the pharaonic bloodline because it's the same pharaon that says, you can go but he doesn't let them go and keep running after them. And then Allah save them like Say Sayyidina Musa salam. and then we even add all of the secrets of the sunnah and, and the immensity of the, the support of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq salam. That's why they mentioned it in this year so that we understand that when we're asking for this maghfirah there are some whom Allah will grant them their ascension in which they're truly free from their body. You see them in body form but in an instant they're able to move towards their soul reality. And they have the permission of Khalil al-Rahman, means they have the support of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq in which to support them to leave and continuously leave their physicality. And this is a great salvation that Allah grants to them. Because the one whom can leave the pharaonic system and with their soul enter into the heavenly kingdom of Allah which is what? Madinatul Munawwara. It's the city of lights, the eternal city of lights, it's the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Then imagine the, the, the immensity of that, that Allah grants the soul of that person 
from Ashura now to be free from their physicality. They can come and go from their physicality as Allah pleases. And as a result their soul is free to enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that grants them a, a najat. Means then they'll be handed over to the reality of Sayyidina Isa And what we described of Sayyidina Isa is that he's Ahlul Bayt and Nabi and that's why the immensity of this station means that on this ascension Sayyidina Isa is teaching return back to the heavenly father. Abu Arwa, the father of souls means to the reality of your origin that you have to have your ascension. We said the ascension of Prophet is to his origin which is La ilaha illallah. But the ascension for the believer with this reality of the khaffa and the reality of Sayyidina Isa and we taught this Sayyidina Isa's his relationship to Prophet now this is the maqam of these Ahlul Bayt in which the ascension of the believer is into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the azimat of this station that can't even be imagined. This can't be imagined because now this is the door of the family of Prophet that from Sayyidina Isa and the reality that Sayyidina Isa represents upon this, this reality. Lifting us into the presence of the Akhfa and this is the most hidden station. Means then this nation is moving in this, that salvation and the najat of the Akhfa reality is the reality of Karbala and the reality of Ashura. That this is the immensity of this station. I mean that which Sayyidina Ibrahim could not complete, could not sacrifice what Allah had asked of him of sacrifice. This is completed only through this bloodline and through the purity of this Ahlul Bayt. The immensity of the reality of Imam Hussain and the self-sacrifice. This is the station of self-sacrifice. This is the qurb and the immense proximity to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad in which represents that mahi al dunub muhi al qulub means that in this world of, of light this ocean of Muhammad, this ocean of reality of Prophet that can't be described but for us just to understand that a spinning ocean of power that's so powerful in its spinning that anything that comes into the proximity will be completely like a centrifuge. In, in science labs they have a spinning and they spin something so fast and the process of spinning separates the elements. You know when you do a blood, a blood lab exam, how do they pick up everything out of your blood? They put it in the spinning and through the spinning they pull out different elements. Just, just for us to even comprehend which you can't comprehend. But this ocean of Muhammad in the immensity of its power as the light enters into that it dissolves everything and make it into a dust. And the reality of that is to take that dust into the presence of Allah like Wahidul Qahar. That reality of Aqfa, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's light is what we duplicate and imitate for Hajj. Why are we making that tawuf? 
it's a duplicate and an imitation of what's happening in the haqqaiq. That everything of lights is now coming into that precincts of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's imitation for just to understand is like the Kaaba. And the Sifat al-Wahid brings everything into the ocean of one. Means from every direction, whatever you are, whoever you are, doesn't matter when it comes into this world of light, it comes into this ocean of wahid. And as a result of the ocean of wahid and the proximity of the reality of Prophet he begins with Sifat al Qahar crushing everything. And that's like when the Kaaba becomes crowded, everybody's crushing, crushing until there's no more space. You see all the white become crushed like an ocean of white. And as they're moving there's actually souls entering into the black stone. As they're crushing there are chosen souls that are entering into that black stone. Not only they're being dressed by the reality of the stone of the, of the Kaaba and the presence of those souls but they're being pressed back into that reality to reach their covenant from Allah Means the immensity of this station of akhfa and the immensity of the maqfirah and the self-sacrifice of Imam Hussain as salam is teaching us because this is the, the kingdom of Prophet and these are the holy crown prince of that reality. Why you think Sayyidina Isa is at that door? This is the only son of Prophet that is upon this earth and his Rasulat and the Ahlul Bayt that taking us into that ocean, into that dimension and the example set by Imam al Hussain salam in which to sacrifice oneself and the immensity of that sacrifice, this, the sacrifice of entire family and the entire bloodlines of, of light and reality that can't be even understood but was symbolic of this station of proximity to the akhfa reality of Sayyidina Muhammad in which everything ghashiya, everything to be like a dust and only that dust can be brought into Divinely Presence, no will, no no, nothing of itself completely effaced and brought to a nothingness. And the, the greatness of that reality, the greatness of that sacrifice and that it's, it's Sultanat with Imam Hussain as salam teaching us that nobody can accomplish what this and these Sultans of Paradise they lay the example. Not like the people of dunya. They send other people to accomplish things for them but these are the people of Akhirah in which they accomplish. The kings of paradise they have accomplished what no man on earth can accomplish. They lead by example and for us they are our kings and they are the sultans of example. When we say Imam al Hussain is salam is the sultan of shuhada and those whom reach the stations of martyrdom and then mushahada that with the perfection of their martyrdom they are the keys for all witnessing and all those whom want their hearts to open to witness in which Allah ayatul kareem is deemed them not dead but they are very much alive. The king of them is Sayyidina Husayn as salam that he is not dead he is very much alive and that he has to sign on any heart that wants to be open to witness the, the heavenly kingdom. So this is the importance of that love and that sacrifice and the eternal cycle of all the Prophets of Allah and that we're in need of their love, we're in need of their prayers, we're in need of, of their nazar upon us, be good to their people, be good to their communities, help their communities to come to the way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad so that we can receive more of their nazar and more of their support. They love their communities like Prophet loves all communities and that they are 
eager to support those whom are willing to help their people to reach towards these salvations, to these lights and to these realities. We pray that Allah to be happy with us, that Prophet to be happy with us, all the Prophets to be happy with us, all awliyaullah fi samai wa fil to be happy with us, our families and our communities. And that Allah grant us the realities of Ashanura. Grant us the realities of salvation from Sayyidina Adam salam, Sayyidina Nuh salam, Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, Sayyidina Musa salam, Sayyidina Muhammad salam, Sayyidina Isa salam and all the Prophets of Allah awliyaullah, all the Sahabi kiram, all Ahlul Bayt, all the awliya fi samai wa fil ard wa bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.